Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It's a great honor for me to be giving this plenary talk today at the TED Week. And uh, I'd like to thank the organizer, the local organizer, Luvo, for, for this opportunity. In my talk, I, I'm going to focus on the biodiversity of Bulgaria, as you'll be spending one week here. Uh, it's really important to, to know more about our unique biodiversity. And um, I, I also gonna go through the uh, conservational efforts of our government throughout the years and uh, also uh, make an overview of the taxonomy, the history of taxonomy in Bulgaria, uh, giving some examples of interest to the audience. Uh, like a large scale digitization projects that are currently going on. Bulgaria is a small to medium sized country situated in the southeast part of Europe. Uh, the total size is um, 111,000 square kilometers. We are, the last census show that uh, we are 6.5 million and the uh, population is uh, significantly decreasing in the last 30 years uh, by more than 2 million. The density is uh, 63 people per square kilometers, which ranks Bulgaria 12th place in Europe. And it's also worth mentioning that uh, nearly 76% of the population live in the, in the big cities. Um, Bulgaria is a mountainous country. Nearly 70% of, of the territory is covered by mountains. To, we have eight mountains higher than 2,000 meters, but there are many more that are lower. And uh, the north, mostly the northern part and the southeastern part are lowlands and, uh, and plains. The, Climate. There are seven climatic zones in the in the country. Uh, as you can see, the majority is uh, covered by the temporal continental and continental uh, climatic uh, uh, region. And we have uh, a very narrow stripe along the Black Sea coast of a, of a Pontic influence. And in the south of Bulgaria, we have uh, a Mediterranean climate, which mostly uh, goes through along the uh, river valleys of uh, Struma, Mestre rivers, Maritza and, and Tunja. And uh, of course, the, the high mountains are there, they're having their own specific climate and mountainous climate. Bulgarian flora is uh, rather rich. Uh, we are considered hotspot in uh, in the Balkans and also uh, in Europe. Uh, there are more than five thousand species known by date, and uh, nearly uh, four thousand and nine hundred uh, flowering plants. Uh, the next uh, species-rich group are the conifers and followed by ferns and, and lycopods. There are 20 floristic regions in the country uh, with uh, the Rhodops mountains here and the Staraplanina, uh, Rila and Peering being the uh, species richest. Uh, poorer, but still with more than 2000 species, each are the Thracian plain and also the Black Coast. 11.3% of Bulgarian plants are endemic. Um, and uh, of, of them, uh, 176 species are Bulgarian endemics, while the rest are white, spread in at least one more country in the, in the Balkan Peninsula, such is the case with uh, the Orpheus flower here. Uh, which is uh, restricted to the Rhodops uh, in the south of Bulgaria, but is also known from the neighboring parts of Greece. Uh, 
Um, this plant is a very interesting because uh, it is uh, known uh, for its ability to uh, resist uh, a long periods of desiccation. That's why it's called the resurrection plant. And it's one of the emblems of uh, Bulgarian uh, flora. Another example here of endemic species is this uh, a poppy from the, from the highest part of, of Pirin, where, we, uh, where it uh, occurs at a, at a very high uh, altitude in the, in the mountain. There is a clear vertical zonation of Bulgarian vegetation with uh, the uh, xerothermic, uh, uh, mostly oak dominated forest from the sea level up to 900 meters in the mountains, followed by, by the mesophilic deciduous forest uh, from 700 to up to 1,700 meters, uh, mostly by, by beach. And uh, then we have a, a coniferous belt from 1,000 to up to 2,200 meters, while the uppermost parts of the mountains are taken up by the subalpine and alpine vegetation. Fungi are the second richest uh, organ group after the animals, mainly insects, of course, uh, and they are relatively fully known, so we, uh, we have uh, two groups of fungi that are uh, more species diverse, the, uh, oops, sorry, the, oh, the, uh, uh, the sac fungi and the, uh, the basiomycetes, while the other three groups, the rusts, the smooth fungi, and the uh, micro uh, midsets, they all together make up uh, like 700 species. And, um, but still we don't know much about, uh, about our fungal diversity. Uh, the rough estimation shows a number of uh, more than 5,300 species at the moment but the actual number is at least five times higher and we expect to uh, reach uh, 24,000 species when the, the fauna is, uh, but uh, the, <laughs> the, the group is better studied, sorry. So the fauna, uh, the animals are the most diverse group, of course, uh, we have 75 classes in the country and nearly 32,000 species known to date, 2.7% uh, of the fauna uh, is taken by the, by the vertebrates, uh, which are um, 858 species, of which uh, birds outnumber all the other uh, classes, and then followed by the fish and the fish-like uh, taxa and in third place we uh, are having the mammals with uh, with bats and the uh, rodents being the the most diverse groups invertebrates are naturally taking the remaining 97 percent of the bulgarian fauna nearly 31,000 species are known until now uh, of which uh, 23,750 uh, species uh, are registered. Uh, the most diverse groups are the uh, Hymenoptera, uh, with roughly 6,000 species, followed by uh, Dipterans and Lepidopterans. From the non insect groups, Arachnids are the most diverse with 2,700, more than 2,700 species, followed by crustaceans. So how much do we know about Bulgarian fauna? It, in a recent study by uh, my collaborator and, and a colleague, uh, Professor Hubenov, uh, 
nearly 42% of Bulgarian fauna is still unknown. And uh, he, oh, sorry, he extrapolated uh, a figure of 53,000 species. Uh, so a real number of Bulgarian animals. Uh, but of course, uh, yeah, we need to work on, uh, uh, we, we, we still need a lot of experts to study the least studied groups. Uh, the least studied are the nematophora, 26.7% of the fauna is known at the moment. There are two small phyla, tartigrats and kinorings each by 45%. And uh, flat, the flatworms, uh, where we know only 50% of the, of the fauna of the country. In the last uh, 25, 30 years, uh, the, the species list has been increased by uh, 4,500 species, roughly. And uh, of course, mostly invertebrates. Uh, and also vertebrates are much better studied and uh, better known every year. Every year we are adding a, a new, new species to the country's list, uh, of which some are, are also new to science, as is the case uh, with this uh, uh, mole species described from recently from Strange Mountain by uh, international group of scientists. Endemics are uh, more than 1,400 species in Bulgarian fauna, which is makes this number 4.2%. It's relatively low endemism, of which uh, we have uh, 850 Bulgarian endemics and uh, 450 Balkan endemics. Typical representative of endemic fauna is this. Uh, a cave harassment, a Paraloa Bureshi, known from the western uh, part of the Staropoina, where it occurs only in caves. And, uh, and this uh, Struma stone lodge, uh, which is endemic to, to the rivers of uh, Struma and Mesta. There are some taxa uh, showing uh, really high endemism such is the case with the hydrobeads and close elites of the uh, gastropods, uh, where the uh, endemism is really high, nearly 96% in the first uh, family and 71% in the second. Myriapods follow with uh, 45% endemic species and also ensiferans uh, with 43%. The uh, Rila and Pirin Mountains, again, are uh, the most rich areas of endemics, uh, followed by the western part of Staropolina and, and the central part, as well as the, the Black Sea coast. Relic fauna is a result of uh, paleoclimatic and uh, paleogeographical changes happening since the tertiary to uh, present day. Uh, there are roughly 350 species, relic species in the country, uh, which are non-endemic. And uh, here are some examples, uh, like this uh, uh, woodpecker, the Picoides tridactylus, which is a, a boreal montane species. Uh, which is uh, distributed in Bulgaria in the highest parts only of Rio Pirin and Rhodops, but uh, it also occurs uh, in, the, in the boreal zone of Paleartics. So, a few figures about the status of barcoding of Bulgarian animals. Uh, in the barcode of life data system, there are more than 36,000 sequences coming from Bulgaria, uh, and they've been assigned to more than 7,100 bins. Uh, 
the data derives from more than 195 projects and uh, uh, 203 published articles. Uh, of the beans, nearly 51% being assigned to Latin names of the classical Linnaean taxonomy and 22% uh, are uh, native, uh, unique to Bulgaria. Geographically, uh, as you can see from, from the map, uh, the data comes from pretty much everywhere in the country, but there are some locations, localities, like uh, here, the western part of Staropolina, Sofia, and uh, Ruse, where we are having more than uh, 1,000 uh, barcoded specimens. So the, this data shows that uh, at present, Bulgaria is among the top 10 barcoded countries in, in Europe. And also it is the largest DNA barcode registry in the, in the Balkan Peninsula. A few words about the conservation work done in Bulgaria until now. Um, the legislation about uh, the protection of Bulgarian nature dates back uh, to the end of the 19th century with the uh, issue of two acts, the Protection of Forest Act and the Hunting Act. And uh, later on, uh, the civil movement starts and uh, around uh, 1928, the first union for the protection of nature has been uh, founded. Uh, shortly after the first nature reserve and, uh, and the first nature park uh, were established. Bulgaria was also among the first countries to uh, publish uh, a red data book. So uh, in uh, 1984, uh, the volume on the plants were published and then the next year followed the, uh, the volume on, on animals. And 25 years later, we, we have a new edition of the red data book, which has been uh, much elaborated, a new Methodology is being introduced uh, and it's been following largely the IUCN uh, assessment uh, uh, schemas and also uh, additional volume uh, on the habitats, on the threatened, threatened habitats being also published. The Natura 2000 network is covering uh, nearly 30 5% of Bulgarian territory, uh, 120 protected areas have been designated uh, for the protection of uh, uh, bird species, while all the rest are uh, designated for the protection of uh, specific uh, habitats or, or other uh, species of, of uh, concern. Uh, we, in Bulgaria, we have also three national parks, which is uh, Stara Planina, uh, Rila, and, and Pirin Mountain. Uh, we have uh, 11 nature parks, uh, one of the largest being the Strange Mountain here, close to the Black Sea, and also uh, 55 uh, nature reserves. Okay, uh, in the second part of my talk, I'm uh, going to give you a, a brief uh, overview of the history of taxonomy in Bulgaria. Uh, so the first to study Bulgarian biodiversity were uh, foreign zoologists and botanists, and, uh, and they, the first expeditions were organized, uh, for instance, by uh, the Hungarian entomologist Imre 
Rivalsky in the beginning of 19th century. He carried out uh, several expeditions in different parts of the country, collecting a huge collection. And uh, later on, part of it being uh, described, uh, many new species are coming exactly for that time and for his trips. Uh, around the uh, liberation of Bulgaria in 1878, uh, the Czech botanist Josef Velenovsky started to publish a series of papers on Bulgarian flora. And uh, these were actually the, the first botanical works uh, on, on Bulgarian uh, plants. Um, other important events in the second half of uh, 19th century is the uh, establishment of Bulgarian Literary Society in Romania in 1869, which is uh, what is now called Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. And uh, in 1888, we have our first university founded and uh, a year later, the Natural History Museum was founded. With regards to the uh, biodiversity research, I would say we were quite lucky with our rulers, both Tsar Ferdinand and Tsar Boris, his son, were very keen nature lovers and also passionate scientists. Um, actually, there are not that many monarchs in the world that uh, left sign in uh, biology. As you may probably know, uh, Albert, uh, the first uh, Albert of Monaco is one of the founders of marine biology and also uh, Emperor Akihito of Japan is also known for his research on the ichthyofauna of Japan. But I think our two kings were also part of this group of uh, score, scores uh, with uh, uh, noble, noble origin. Uh, and uh, they were really recognized by the scientists at that time as an expert. Um, Ferdinand was uh, an uh, ornithologist, but also collecting many other groups of animals. And Boris uh, was very interested in, in plants. And uh, as you can see here uh, on these photos, this is uh, Ferdinand in Egypt, uh, together with uh, uh, Dr. Buresh, the, the then director of the Royal Institutes. Uh, and uh, here we have Boris with his uh, kids collecting plants in, in the Rodop area. An interesting fact, uh, is that uh, on the day of his uh, uh, designation as a, as a king, uh, Ferdinand of 3rd of October, 1918, he collected a butterfly in the, in the garden of the king's palace. And, uh, and this butterfly is now uh, kept in our, in the museum. Uh, so indeed uh, this, uh, Two people did a lot for for the development of the natural sciences in in Bulgaria. Uh, yeah, quite a few species are bearing names uh, Borisi or Ferdinandi, as is the case with uh, this colorful bird here from the Philippines, named Borisia, and also uh, this uh, endemic plant from the highest part of Pirin Mountain which is named Arabis Ferdinandi Kuburgi. Uh, in the beginning of 20th century, the first uh, um, interdisciplinary organized expedition began in uh, Bulgaria. Uh, this is a photo from uh, the excursion, the field trip to the Pirin Mountains in uh, 1914. Uh, at during this expedition, actually, they, they were also, uh, except for botanists and uh, zoologists, they were also geologists, 
and uh, the first measurements of the of the peaks were made at that time and were um, a lot of uh, adjustments of the of the uh, height of the of the peaks were made and here uh, we have uh, uh, dr burish uh, collecting in the western easter trace uh, during the the wars uh, later on uh, in the beginning of uh, of 20th century we have our first nature research society founded so the entomology society in 1909 and the bulgarian botanical society uh, the first decree that was issued issued by uh, the new king Boris in uh, 1980 was the establishment of the Royal Natural Science Institutes, which include the Royal Museum of Natural History, the Royal Entomological Station, the Science Library, Royal Zoo, and the Royal Botanical Gardens. And as a first director of the institutes were appointed Dr. Ivan Burish, which uh, who later become an academician and is one of the founders of the modern Bulgarian zoology. Later on in 1928, 1947, uh, several research institutes were founded within the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, the Forest Research Institute, the Zoological Botanical Institutes. In 1950, the fauna of Bulgaria, began to be published and up to now we have 32 volumes in Bulgarian and uh, shortly after that uh, the floor of Bulgaria started with in 1966 with 11 volumes uh, altogether. Um, several journals uh, were uh, founded within the institutes uh, some of them are uh, uh, active uh, today, like the Acta Zoologica Bulgarica, Phytologica Balkanica, uh, and they, they are still uh, published by, under the editorship of the, of the institutes. I have also uh, provided some photos of uh, more recent important books on biodiversity of Bulgaria, like this uh, Biogeography and Ecology of Bulgaria, but there are many more, of course, uh, uh, and uh, mostly due to um, the efforts of international uh, teams. In the last 25 years, Bulgaria joined several uh, international organizations and uh, um, research infrastructures such as uh, Life Watch Eric in 2022, Elter in 2009, CTAF in 2060. 16 and uh, and we are now in progress of uh, becoming of full members of uh, GBIF. So with regards to the taxonomic expertise in the country, that's uh, in in 19 uh, in 2010 uh, we've been. Uh, working on a project PESI, trying to identify the uh, uh, taxonomic expertise in Bulgaria. And uh, at that time, uh, we have uh, identified that uh, it is distributed between the 11 institutions, uh, 10 societies, and uh, 119 taxonomists. Uh, the major centers of uh, taxonomic research were Sofia, uh, Plovdiv, Stara Zagora, and Blagojev Grad. This year, as part of the project, the Red List of Insect Taxonomists, funded by the European Commission, uh, where we were uh, studying the, uh, the situation um, the, of uh, entomology in, in Europe, uh, in Bulgaria, there are only 34 active insect experts, uh, of which only 29 at permanent positions, and only nine have habilitation. 
these are rather worrying facts. Uh, on this graph, you can see the uh, taxonomic groups, the main taxonomic groups, uh, and the number of experts uh, uh, working uh, actively uh, at the moment in Bulgaria. And um, for some very diverse groups as Orthoptera and Trichoptera, we have only one active expert, uh, which is of course not uh, enough. And there are 12 orders of insects for which we don't have a single expert at the moment, including uh, fleas and lice, which as you know, are uh, important for the human health. Even more worryingly, some of the institutions that were having taxonomic expertise in 2010 lost it with the in these 12 years uh, and uh, there are three institutes uh, that completely lost their tax, tax, uh, entomological expertise and uh, also three groups for which we don't have uh, a single expert at the moment. The decrease is uh, also very clear here in Plodiv University, where from six, six active taxonomists in 2010, now we have only one. In the last uh, part of my presentation, I'll touch on the the ongoing uh, digitization projects, as I believe it's of interest to many of you. Um, I'd like to start with uh, with SEBDER, mentioning SEBDER, because this was our first uh, large-scale digitization project in 2009. Um, it was funded by the Bulgarian Science Fund uh, with a total amount of uh, 700, more than 700,000. Euro, and uh, it was uh, uh, made by uh, the project was made by a consortium of of ten uh, institutions, seven institutes of Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, and three universities. Um, most uh, the main aims of 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 Sebder was, of course, it was uh, the idea was to create a center of excellence of in biodiversity ecosystem research. But um, uh, the actual tasks were to uh, renovate the existing collections and collection rooms, to purchase uh, taxonomic equipment, to train a new generation of taxonomists. Uh, and uh, all those uh, activities were uh, uh, accomplished. Uh, here you can see these are the um, renovated uh, collection rooms of the uh, herbarium in the Institute of Biodiversity Ecosystem Research, also the insect uh, uh, collection room uh, of the Natural Museum of Natural History. Another major output of of said there was uh, the development of a, a database of the type specimens in the in the country and uh, this uh, database is currently available on the website of the uh, national museum of natural history so if you're interested just please uh, go there it's under uh, the collection tab disco Bulgaria started two years ago uh, with a total amount of uh, 2.6, more than 2.6 million euro. And uh, it, the duration is uh, till 2024, but uh, yeah, giving the very complicated times we are living, now, uh, I expect that it will be prolonged as we are not uh, really following the, the schedule. 
So we got funding for, for the first year. And now uh, the second year is, uh, uh, is approaching. Uh, the, uh, there are two beneficiaries in this core, the uh, Institute of Biodiversity Ecosystem Research and the National Museum of Natural History. And the uh, objectives of this core are to uh, develop uh, uh, um, the increase the technical capacity of these institutions by again renovation of collection rooms, uh, building of entirely new collection rooms, uh, also to uh, develop the human capacity. A lot of trainings of uh, next generation taxonomists are envisaged within the DISCO. Uh, the actual digitization work is uh, carried out in work package three. And we have also two other work packages supporting uh, the stakeholder engagement and also uh, uh, awareness rising, like different awareness rising activities. The ultimate goal of Disco Bulgaria is to digitize 1 million uh, collection items and to uh, take 250,000 images. It's very ambitious, considering what I've just showed about the decreasing taxonomic expertise in the country. Uh, in the first year, we've been uh, mostly focusing on the setting the environment and uh, getting the things rolling. A lot of uh, management work's being done. Uh, and uh, but at the end, the last months, we have also started the actual digitization work. And uh, these are the figures uh, for the first year, more than 32,000 records in, uh, in our database. By the way, we are using Specify 7 for digitization. It's been decided at the beginning uh, by the consortium. And we have also taken uh, more than 10,000 images. Uh, and uh, we have also uh, built uh, a new collection room for the fish, uh, amphibians, and reptiles in the National Museum of Natural History, a new botanical a new herbarium and also renovated completely the uh, uh, invertebrate fossils and plants uh, collection rooms at the museum while the colleagues from the institute of biodiversity ecosystem research they they created uh, a, a new lab for uh, for mikota so a new fungal lab i'd like to thank to my Colleagues and the collaborators, uh, Sozapol Purina, Borsal Gurgiev, Georgi Pop Gurgiev from the museum, and also Professor Rutsetumir Dencher from the Institute of Biodiversity Ecosystem Research for the information they provided for, for this talk, and also to all of you for the attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. We learned a lot. I'm wondering now, um, time-wise, are we good, Shelley? All right, so there's time for questions. All right, so if you're in the in-person here and you have a question, please make your way up here. Um, and if you need to think about it a minute, are there questions for Pavel in the chat yet? Not yet, okay. Does anybody have one? Wheels are turning, I promise you. Oh, Quentin has one. Quentin, come. You have to come. Yes, you have to come. People have to move. Think of it as an exercise and stretching and an opportunity to get up from the chair. Thank you. I'm Quentin Green from Mines Botanic Garden. I wondered how much uh, amateur uh, natural history goes on and, and citizen science in Bulgaria. It's, it's a very good question. Uh, yeah. Not enough, I would say, uh, although there is uh, recently uh, we've 
recently started to use a, a new app that's been developed by by Bulgarian team for recording uh, biodiversity field work on on the field. It's called uh, uh, Smart Birds. It's mostly developed for for birds, but it's now we are expanding to to other groups, to plants, to to insects, uh, and. Uh, and at the moment, uh, we are also organizing a campaign within the within the museum uh, for the citizens to start using the app and to report uh, uh, at least some uh, uh, flagship species. Um, I, I don't know whether you've heard, but uh, we have like uh, the, the beaver appeared in Bulgaria last year since maybe two centuries of uh, uh, disappearance. And, uh, and now we, we are using the beaver as a, as a, a, a flag uh, species uh, to motivate uh, people report uh, on, on its presence in the field. And uh, we are also thinking of uh, how to expand the, uh, this uh, smart bird software and, and link it to to, for instance, to specify to our collection management system uh, and reduce the efforts of uh, people that need to re-enter uh, the same uh, data uh, again if they are already have it on, on smart birds, for instance. So um, these are the main things that are going on. But... Um, it's quite uh, difficult at the moment to to do such things uh, because of the very uh, complicated situation in general in the world. So the uh, citizen science is uh, is not uh, that much uh, in priority to governmental institutions, and uh, and we, we don't get much support from the government, although we are trying. Continuously, we are trying, but it's not easy. Now it's the turn. Um, I would like to present a question from uh, the online participants. And it's lovely because I had a similar or the same question. So I'm excited. Um, Chauvin, you and I are on the same page. And Chauvin Leachman, who's joining us from New Zealand. Uh, asks, does Pavel have any suggestions on how to increase the taxonomic expertise in Bulgaria? My question was related as to when you mentioned the human capacity development and the taxonomic expertise is how are you doing that? Oh, this is a very difficult question. Yeah, uh, Everything starts from universities. That's the, the main thing. So we really need to get this in the curricula of the universities. Taxonomy is now completely out of the curriculum, not out, but uh, I mean, now the focus is not that much on taxonomy. And we, I, I remember when I was graduating 20 plus years ago, we were having these uh, nomenclature courses and, and taxonomy courses, uh, which nowadays uh, are not of the interest of the students. So everybody's um, more things are shifting more to the in the direction of ecology and uh, molecular biology. So we really need to be do, to bring back these classical courses, and uh, because there are still students, there are still students motivated, interested in in this, and uh, and uh, the next step is of course the better collaboration between the universities and the research institutions. Uh, in Bulgaria, we, in the last 20 years, we somehow get got separated. I mean, these are two independent universities and uh, we really start, need to start talking to each other and, and more actively collaborating because with the institutions, with the institutes, we can provide the environment, we can really uh, give the expertise to the students, uh, while the in 
university can provide us with these good students that are interested in the in the field. For for at the moment, we are having this conversation yesterday in a welcome party with uh, Ilya here from the University of Sofia, and uh, exactly about that problem that we really need to strengthen our our collaboration. Thank you for that. Um, do we have time for another question or is it? Okay. Oh, we do have a request uh, online that we can handle is to make sure that that link you mentioned to the types, I believe, was the question. Mm -hmm. We need to get that link into the Zoom okay. chat. Yeah. yeah, I can provide. All right. Many thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.